Hello and welcome to part four of this Tableau Made Easy series. Last time we created our very first visualization using our earthquake data set and it is looking sharp as you can see here. We plotted the earthquake locations, we added key information to the pop-up tooltip, and we changed the sizes and colors of our data points to help our viewer or user quickly and dynamically see where the most powerful earthquakes took place. In this tutorial and the subsequent two tutorials, let's run over some of the key functionality that comes via the features over on the left of our screen. So first, I just wanna to touch on the reason that we have some of our variables over on the left of screen with blue icons and some with green icons. And you can see the two sets are separated by this line here. Now, you might remember that when we connected to our data source, so in our case, our earthquake data CSV file, Tableau assigned each column in our data a data type, so things like integers, strings, and dates. But what is interesting is that behind the scenes, it also assigns each column a role. And these roles are either a dimension or a measure. Dimensions are these ones up here in blue, and they essentially contain qualitative values, so things like IDs, names, and dates. Dimensions are very useful as we can use them to essentially categorize or segment our data. So here we could look at the number of earthquakes by day or the number of earthquakes by location and so on. Now measures on the other hand, and they are shown down here in green, they essentially contain numeric or quantitative values that can be measured or can be aggregated. And actually when you drag a variable which has been categorized as a measure onto the view in the middle of the screen here, Tableau actually applies an aggregation to that measure by default. So this could be a sum or a count for example, or even an average. And we can see this is what Tableau has actually done for our latitude and longitude variables at the top of screen. Now Tableau is doing all of this automatically. It is assuming it knows what we want. And to be honest, it normally does a pretty good job. If it ever gets it wrong, or if we simply ever want to change these roles, then we can. So for example's sake, let's say that for some reason, we wanted our magnitude variable to be a dimension rather than a measure. We could just head over to that variable and click on the dropdown. And then down here, we could just click convert to dimension. And once we've done this, you can now see that it exists with a blue icon above the dividing line. And it would mean that we could do different things with it in our visualization. Anyway, we don't really want magnitude to actually be a dimension. So we could either just hit control Z to undo that change, or I could click on the drop down again and then click convert to measure. So hopefully that shows you that you are in full control, even though Tableau likes to take a stab at things in the first instance. Cool, so that is dimensions and measures at a really high level. They are essentially another way that Tableau likes to categorize our variables so it knows what to do with them when we make use of them in our visualizations. Next, let's head over to marks here at the bottom of this middle panel. And this section here is formally known as the marks card. And we've actually played around with this a little bit already. So we're at least somewhat familiar with it, which is great. Now, marks are essentially what our visualization is using to show our data. So for example, on our map here, the marks are each of the little circles that represent each earthquake in our data. And we've used the marks card to alter and refine the appearance of those, as well as any accompanying information that goes with them. So you'll remember that when we first brought our latitude and longitude data onto our visualization canvas here, we just had a single blue dot in the middle of our screen. We then dragged our ID variable, or in other words, our unique earthquake number onto the detail mark to tell Tableau that we wanted our data or our visualization shown at ID ID level. And when we did that, we saw it split it all out to that level of granularity with a data point for each unique earthquake ID. And this was amazing to see, but you might also remember that at this point, all of our earthquakes were represented by circles
models that were only one size and were only one color. We again used the marks card and we dragged our magnitude variable onto both the color box and the size box. And with a few refinements within the options we had available to us, we got it looking like it does here on screen, which is so much more informative and intuitive for our viewer or user. We even added the location information onto the tooltip box of our marks card so that when our viewer or user hovers over any of the earthquake data points, it made their life even easier. As an example of this, let's just pick this earthquake here. Our user now has that location information shown to them, which is really, really powerful. Now, before we move on, like I said, the marks on our map here are the small circles that we have representing each of our earthquakes. But here's the thing, we of course aren't always going to be showing our data using a map. With Tableau we're going to be creating all sorts of different tables or charts or visualizations. So very quickly, and you don't need to follow along with what I do here, if I just change this chart type to not be a map but to be a horizontal bar chart, so if I head up here and click the show me button and then I click on the horizontal bar chart icon here at the top right, and remember you don't need to follow along with this. This now has our data, so each earthquake ID down the Y axis there being instead represented as a horizontal bar with each of those bars being the magnitude of that particular earthquake. Now, I'll be completely honest, this is not the most useful of charts. We will create a much better bar chart than this in an upcoming tutorial. But the key thing I want to say here is that now we have a bar chart instead of a map, the marks for our visualizations are now each of the bars. And you can see that when I hover over one of them here, the tooltip appears as we saw before. So we could again go through and change the color of the bars as well as all sorts of other parameters for this particular visualization using the color, size, label, detail and tooltip widgets over there on the marks card. So just once again to reiterate my point, marks are essentially what our visualization is using to show the data. And we can use the marks card to alter and refine the appearance of those as well as any accompanying information that goes with them. And actually, very, very quickly, before I undo the changes I've made here and turn this all back to our map, I want to touch on the label widget on the marks card as we're yet to discuss that. So label is where we can essentially add information or text onto our visualization so the viewer can see it without having to hover over it to get the tooltip, for example. So on my somewhat awful bar chart here, I can show you what I mean. So if I go and drag magnitude onto the label mark, so let's grab magnitude and I'm going to drop it onto label here, we can see that each of our bars is now accompanied by that piece of information, which can be really useful, especially on bar charts or line charts where we don't want the viewer to have to go searching for key information. And again, if we click onto the label mark button itself, we can see that we've got a whole lot of options available to us. Like always, we can change the appearance, so things like the size and the font, but more importantly, we can change how that information appears. At the moment, by default, under this section called marks to label, it is set to all. So this means that every one of our marks will get a label. So every bar gets the magnitude value added to the end of it. And this is fine here on a bar chart, but on a map, as you could imagine, this would probably get pretty chaotic. So let's have a play with this. We could change this to instead be min max, for example. And here near the top, we can see that we have the smallest bar labeled with our corresponding magnitude of five. And then the earthquake with the highest magnitude somewhere way down this chart would be labeled with its magnitude too, but none of the other bars will have that label with them. Now, to be honest, this sort of labeling of the minimum point and the maximum point only probably isn't quite so fitting here on a bar chart, but on a line chart, for example, Example, it might be really powerful. So let's look at another option. Instead of min max, we can choose something like selected. And this is really, really cool. So our viewer or user could drag a selection box over some data points of interest. So like so. And when they do be returned the labels for only those data points. So just like the other options we have on our marks card, 
label is very, very powerful and it allows us some really great customization for our visualizations. But my advice would be to really think hard about the best way to use this each time, depending on both the chart type that you're using and of course, the key message that you're looking to get across to the viewer. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and undo all of that to get back to our map that we had at the end of the last tutorial. And then in the next two tutorials, I want to talk in more depth about these last two areas up here. So filters in the next tutorial and then pages in the tutorial after that. And we are actually going to use both of these to add some amazing functionality to our map. So as always, I will see you in the next video.